It's time for Friday Follies, right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. At first you feel the tremulous rumbling, then the faint smell of sulfur smoke. The spectral tracks appear in the mist, and the red light, like a demon's eye, cuts through the darkness. Screaming down the track, the transcontinental terror is making its nightmarish run. proudly presents, in celebration of World Audio Drama Day, a new musical comedy by Pete Lutz, Do I Spectre? I'll Say I Do, starring Les Marsden, Todd Faulkner, and the Narada Radio Company. Yes, ma'am. Chives, that man from the, uh, agency will be arriving soon. Has there been any sign of... <clears throat> you know who? I beg your pardon? Oh, you can't be that deaf. My late husband. Have you seen him at all today? No, ma'am. Oh, I do hope he doesn't make a fool of me in front of... Uh, <clears throat> and not make a showing. My bub? Oh, never mind. Get the door, please, and show uh, the gentleman in. <laughs> Donald, Donald, I know that's you. Why do you force me into situations like these? Why can't you just, just, whatever it is you ghosts do when you depart? Oh, Donald. Mr. Woodrow, where more? Where the flag of them? Mr. Protoplasm, welcome to my home. Say, this is quite a stately manor. Yes. How did you know? How did I know what? How did you know it was called Stately Manor? I'll ask the questions if you don't mind. Are you Mrs. Stately? I am Mrs. Newcastle upon Tyne. Is your boss here? 
I beg your pardon? Your boss, your boss, Mrs. Stately, the lady who owns this frowsy dump. The Stateleys haven't lived here for years. So you're squatting? Squatting? I could have sworn when I walked in that you were standing, but maybe you're taller than I thought. I am Mrs. Britannia Newcastle upon Tyne. I own Stately Manor. Well, if you're the owner, you do have the right to squat if you want to. Yes, ma'am, you sure do have squatters' rights. My card. Mr. Woodrow Fillmore Protoplasm, owner and operator of Spectre Detectors. Uh, Mr. Protoplasm, I'm so glad you're here. My husband Don't tell me, your husband doesn't understand you. Well, that's all fine and dandy, ma'am, but that's not the kind of business I'm running here. Uh, No, I... I mean, a decent-looking dame like you shouldn't have any trouble getting someone to understand you. I happen to know quite a few understanding fellows, and a number of very understanding women, if you get my drift. Oh, uh, Mr. Protoplasm. Mrs. Newcastle upon time, if that's your real name. And may I call you Mrs. N.U.T. for short? Now, Mrs. Nutt, I understand from my secretary that you wanted to book my services because you were being haunted by a ghost. Now I find you looking for some kind of dating service. It is a ghost. It's a what? A ghost. A ghost. I am being haunted by the ghost of my dead husband. Oh, why didn't you say so? My card. I already have your card. I'll take another one. I have thousands. I got them on sale because they spelled my middle name wrong. Your middle name isn't Fillmore? It is, but it only has one F. Uh, Mr. Protoplasm, if we can get down to business, please. I called you here because the ghost of my late husband, who passed away a few months ago, has been haunting Stately Manor ever since. Ah, yes. Was that the eerie laughter I heard when I first arrived? Yes. Well, he seems happy to be dead. What are you complaining about? But he's frightened all the servants away. All but one, Chives, our butler. Chives is almost completely deaf, so he doesn't get frightened by the laughter. I see. Let me ask you one more question, probably the most important one. How much money did your late husband leave you? Oh, Oh, why, almost thirty million dollars. Why is that important? Why is that important? Why, Mrs. Nutt, when a man gets to be my age, he finds that he must believe in something. And while I don't believe in ghosts, I do believe in money, and... You don't believe in ghosts? But how? Don't you see? It's because I don't believe in ghosts that I'm so successful in my field. Why, I've spooked more spooks than you can shake a stick at, if that's your idea of a fun evening. Oh, Jamison! Jamison! Right here, Father. Wow! Hey, don't sneak up on a guy. Mrs. Nutt, this is my son, Jamison Protoplasm, who may just end up inheriting Spectre Detectors after I die, if I don't get a better offer from Bob Hope in the meantime. Jamison, tell this lady our motto. Yes, Father. Will Rogers is famous for his famous saying, I never met a man I didn't like. W.C. Fields is famous for his famous movie, Never give a sucker an even break. <clears throat> I'll take over from here. But I am famous for my famous motto, which can be shouted from the city. And hide in the grotto, I'll mutter it when sober, and I'll sing it when I'm blotto. I never met a ghost that I believed in. Spooky critters don't get far with me. No, I never met a ghost that I believed in. That's why my services are far from free. When faced with my disbelief, spirits shrink their sheets in grief, and woof, they go poof, like a frightened thief. They give up the ghost to my client's relief. No, Dad's never met a ghost that he believes in. Scientific methods are his fort. Just as a vest's a coat without no sleeves in. No ghost can show without my father's snort. Remember he's famous for his famous motto, which is already warbled in his famous vibrato in languorous lento. Or plucked Pit-see-cut-ho. You've never met 
let a ghost that you believe in? I'm afraid this is your light motif. But like a traveling preacher who perceives sin, I perceive a change in your belief. He shows his derision at each apparition and all superstitions laid back. No, I've never met a ghost that I believed in. And if the ghost is real, I just don't care. There you are, madam. I think that explains everything. Mr. Protoplasm, you're hired. <laughs> was that him? Yes. That was Donald, my late husband. Something familiar about that voice. Ah, well. What did you say? I'm hired? My two favorite words. How soon can you start? Just as soon as I receive a very large retainer. I have a check right here. Aha! My six other favorite words. Um, very well, Mrs. Nutt. I must return to my office to gather my scientific gear, but I'll leave my son here to take measurements and get the stump fitted for a coat and two pair of pants. Adieu. Hmm, this room is 12 feet by 24 feet. Let me write that down. Ooh, just caught a chill. Why is it so cold all of a sudden? Achoo! What's today? October 30th. Yes, it's Indian summer, so it shouldn't be... Something tells me I should exit, but quick. Oh, no, please don't go. Who said that? I did. <laughs> Gee, you're cute. I can hear you, but I can't see you. Oh, I'm sorry. It's been so long since I appeared to anybody. I forgot to make sure. Well, hello. So you can see me now? I'll say I can. And you're not afraid of me? I'm not sure if you're real or if I'm seeing things. Oh, I'm real, all right. Let me prove it to you. <gasps> oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> I suppose I should introduce myself. I'm Jamison Protoplasm. I'm a ghost hunter. Hello, Jamison. My name is Lillian Stately. I'm a found ghost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Protoplasm. Any calls while I was out? No, Mr. P, but you have a... Uh... I'm in a very big hurry. You'll have to speak more quickly. Try using only every other word. That'll save time. Have client in office. What? I didn't have time to see any other clients. I just got hired out at Stately Manor on Long Island. Finally, I can dine out again and order something with meat in it. I'm sorry, Mr. P, but I already gave the fellow a mani-pedi, so that officially makes him our client. You need to make up your mind whether you want to be a secretary or a manicurist. I'll make up my mind when you remember my name. I'll remember your name when you tell me what it is. So what can I do for you fellas? My manicurist, uh, my secretary, didn't tell me there were two of you waiting for me. Which one of you got the mani-pedi? Answer me. My name is Salvatore Rigatoni. Ah, well, I'm glad to finally meet you, Mr. Rigatoni. I've seen your name scribbled on chalkboards all over Little Italy. And who is this other gentleman? Hey, he's an old gentleman. He's a my brother. I call him a shadow. Well, no wonder my secretary didn't tell me he was here. Hey, wait a minute. You mean you can see him? Certainly I can see him. Why wouldn't I? On account of he's a ghost. Don't be ridiculous. Wait here a second. Hey, you! Use the intercom! What intercom? It's two tin cans and a very long piece of string. You heard me. Oh, all right. Oh, secretary. Yes, Mr. Protoplasm. Would you come in here a moment? Hmm? I'll be right there. 
You dippy dame. I heard that. What do you want? You just now called me in here. What? I did? Well, so long as you're here, would you be so kind as to tell me how many people are in this office? Well, there's you, there's me, there's Mr. Ravioli. Rigaton, rigaton. That's it? You don't see anybody else? Do you have a mouse in your pocket or something? Shut the door on your way out. So it appears that I'm seeing my first ghost. I'm thunderstruck, not to mention lightning struck at seeing my first ghost. After 20 successful years of ghost hunting. Huh. What will the boys at the art club say? If I had a yacht. If I knew any of the boys there. Hey, listen, you. I don't have time to take your case. I've just been hired to do a big job out on Long Island. So you'll have to come back another time. In other words, scram. All the time. We hear a visa from the ghost to hunt. We got no time for you. Take your business elsewhere. I've been to every ghost to hunt in the town. Now look, I'm willing to offer you up on my life for savings. Twenty dollars. To get somebody to take my case. Mr. Rigatoni, your case begins to intrigue me. Twenty dollars, you say. Very well. I'll take it under advisement. But I must know a few things first. Why do you want to get rid of your brother's ghost? Don't you like him? Sure, sure, I like him. I like him fine. If he was my cousin, I'd probably like him better. A completely understandable argument. So if you like him... Why do you want him to cross over to the other side? Well, I'm glad you ask me that question. You see, I play a piano downtown in the cat house. And a shadow, he always causing trouble for me. He chases the girls, he frightened the customers away. He making me lose my job someday. Tell me more about this cat house. Um, about how your brother frightens the customers away. Does he moan? Oh, no, no, no. He no make it a sound with his voice. Does he rattle chains? <laughs> nah, that's no scare. Look, I get him show you how he do. Hey, Shadow! <laughs> Shad, you show this man how you scare him. Eh? Hmm. Oh, <laughs> it's a nothing that he do that he no warmed up yet. Hey, listen, you're trying to make me look bad. I tell you, you scared. You gotta scare. Go on now. Well, I don't know. Wait, 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 hold on. He's almost there. He really showed you something in a minute. Hey, look, he's not taking his case unless you get it tough. You gotta be plenty of tough. You hear me? Now, now go. Go on, and you'll be some tougher ghost. Okay, you watch him, Mr. My brother. He really show you something. He'd better do it soon, or I'll be a ghost myself. Now, how you like it? Wow, this is really something. I'm convinced. I'll take the case. Now, can you get him to stop all this wanton destruction? I'll try, but uh, you, you know, you see, he may not have wanted. Hey, once he get it started, he no stop it quick. He's uh, one of those, uh, what do you call him? Uh, a chicken ghost. A chicken ghost? What on earth? You know, a poultry guest. <laughs> So, Lillian, how long have you been here as a... Um... As a ghost? Since 1903. But I was born here. My family sold Stately Manor to the Newcastle upon Tynes in the late 20s. Wow. So you died 30 years ago. May I ask what happened? You don't have to tell me. No, it's all right. My rowboat collided with a produce push cart in Long Island Sound. I don't really like to talk about it. Your rowboat? A push cart? In the Sound? I said I don't like to talk about it. Don't the Newcastle upon Tynes know about you? Nope. I've been pretty quiet the last 30 years. What about the other ghost, Mr. Newcastle upon Tynes? No, Tynes? he's been self centered, lording it over everybody, thinking he's the only ghost in the place. I didn't think it was a good idea to show myself. Until now. Yeah, until now. <laughs> Even 
Some love surround me with the spirit of your desire. Phantom love, your ghostly kiss sets my heart on fire. Just like Hero and Leander, those misguided lovers of old, like. Roxanne and Alexander, our love will be great and so bold. Phantom love, when Juliet taught Romeo to kiss, she died for love, but you summoned me to life with spectral bliss. Tristan and Isolde, Rama and Sita, shall our names be carved alongside ours? Phantom love, spectral devotion with wondrous Well, tell me, Rigatoni, why is your brother stuck around all this time instead of crossing over? Why ask me? Why you no let him tell his story? All right, so, um, Shadow, what's your reason for staying on Earth, close to your brother, instead of, you know... Mm -hmm. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh, yes, I see. Aha! Uh -huh. oh, very interesting. <laughs> hey, what did he say to you? That was probably the doidiest joke I've ever heard from a ghost. But aside from that, I didn't really get any information out of him. Why don't you tell me? <laughs> okay, I tell you. My brother, he died right after he went to crap again. He stick around because he always try to find the guy that'll lose. Then he find out that this guy, he died too. Now Shatter, he want to cross over Anna Colette. But he stay here so long, he's stuck. Oh, very interesting. How much did he win in the crap game? Three bucks. Well, that should more than cover the damage he did to my office. Gentlemen, and I use that term strictly in the pejorative sense. Hey, my brother, he's over 21. You know, you're going to go down in history as a stumble in the march of time. Ahem. As I was saying, gentlemen, I have just had a brainstorm. Funny, I know he or nothing. I was wearing my rubbers when it happened. So listen, my children, and you shall hear. Why don't you and your brother come back with me to this other job I'm working? I'll be able to get rid of two specters with one stone. You're gonna get rid of what? I'm gonna get rid of habeas. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah. No, no, that's somebody else's joke. Thought you could fool me, didn't you? No, my good man, I'll rid the world of your brother and Mr. Newcastle upon time at the same time. I mean, time at the same time. Well, I don't know. You want your brother to cross over, don't you? Sure, sure. Cross over. So why don't you get his opinion? We can. Why not? He's gone already to this nude castle other times and place. Well, what are we hanging around here for? <laughs> Let's go. Oh, Lillian, I'm so happy. I've never felt like this before. Neither have I. I was so young when I died, I never had the chance to fall in love. And my father's kept me so busy all my life, I never have either. But don't worry, darling. I'll tell him all about us, and I'm sure he'll understand. We'll be together forever. Really, Jamison, darling? Truly, my dearest. Jamison? Jamison, where is that no-good son of mine? <laughs> well, gotta go!
again, Mrs. Knott. I'm back as promised with my ghost hunting gear. I hope my son hasn't been underfoot this whole time. Why, no. I don't believe I've seen him at all, as a matter of fact. Well, I can't say as I'm surprised. So let me introduce my assistant, Mr. Rigatoni. He's the one with all the gear on his back. Say hello to the lady, Rigatoni. Hey, hello, Mrs. The Nude Castle all the time. Ah, uh, yes, hello. But the name, Mr. Rigatoni, is Newcastle upon Tyne. That's what I said. You got a hearing problem? <sighs> but, Father, who is this man? I thought I was your assistant. What happened to family loyalty? Well, employees are thicker than water, and Rigatoni here is thicker than most. Besides, he's paying me $20 for the privilege of being my assistant. Can you meet or beat that offer? I'm afraid I can't. Since in all the time I've worked for you, you've never paid me. In that case, remind me to give you a promotion. And if you remember to remind me, I'll fire you. Can I put all of this gear down? It's a heavy. Yes, but be careful. It's... <laughs> Fragile. <laughs> it's a better. Ah, oh, Rigatoni, were you born an idiot or did somebody teach you? I was too poor to go to school. Well, let's get started. Let's take a look at the gear. Hmm, wait... Where's the Ouija board? What's at the Ouija board? Not a Ouija board, a Ouija board. I use it to summon the spirits. Well, I guess we no needed a Ouija board, because Ouija are all here now. <laughs> it's just some fine a joke, eh, boss? Rigatoni, it's plain to see how you were allowed to emigrate to the United States. Yeah? How can you tell? You're always crossing some kind of line. Now get over there and... Oh, Mr. Protoplasm, I'm absolutely beside myself. Mayor Gottlieb is paying me a visit this afternoon, and I need you to capture my husband's ghost before he arrives. Ah, Mayor Gottlieb, eh? I know him very well. He's running for re-election this year, and I wrote a very large check to his campaign. Oh, really? Of course, the check bounced, but I think it's the thought that counts, don't you? Mr. Protoplasm, I'm the chairwoman of the committee to re-elect the mayor, and I must make a good impression on his honor when he arrives. And of course, this means no strange goings-on with ghosts. Now, in which room do you plan to start? Well, I think of the kitchen. The kitchen? But my late husband's ghost has never been seen in there. Well, maybe he goes in a dare when nobody's a-looking. Anyway, it's a good place to start. And besides, I'm a-hungry. Well... <laughs> no, no, Shadow, you're a ghost. You know I eat nothing. Look, I tell you what. You go on, uh, you find that other ghost. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Mr. Nuda Castle all of the time. Rigatoni, make sure you wash your hands. <laughs> I fool you. I just washed them last week. Wash your neck, too. Mr. Protoplasm, I sincerely hope you will be taking this more seriously than your assistant. I certainly will, Mrs. Nutt. And to show you how sincere I am, I'll begin by taking a union-mandated 20-minute coffee break. Oh, Mr. Protoplasm! Now see here, my good woman. The Ghost Quashing Union has very strict rules. Now, I'm entitled to a 20-minute break every 30 minutes, and so far I've earned three breaks, so I'll just sit down here for an hour. An hour? By the very idea, trying to usurp union regulations? I'll bring the head of the Ghost Quashing Union down here, and he'll give you a strict talking to. By the way, I take cream and sugar in my coffee, so just run along now and... Hmm? Father! Oh, Jamison, are you still here? Say, listen, guess what? The strangest thing happened to me over at the office. Father, I've got wonderful news! Believe it or not, I finally saw my first actual ghost. Isn't that a fine thing? Me, a respectable ghost quasher for 20 years, actually seeing a real ghost. <laughs> What'll my friends down at the ghost quasher's lodge think about that? But, Dad, you don't have any friends at that lodge. Don't think I don't know it. They're all a bunch of backstabbing toadies. I have half a mind to cancel my membership. You're not a member of that lodge, Dad. Take a letter. To whom? To the Ghost Quash's Lodge, local 246. Gentlemen, semicolon. In close, please find a check for my annual membership dues. Send that off immediately. But there's no check. Yes, and saves them right. (laughs) 
Go see what all that's about, son. I've got 15 minutes left in my first 20-minute break. <laughs> Why, Mrs. Nutt, what's the matter? Oh, it's terrible. Simply terrible. Your assistant has knocked over and broken all of the china I had been planning to set out for the mayor's visit. Rigger Tony, how on earth could you be so careless? I have a good mind to dock your pay for every piece broken, if I was paying you, that is. By the way, Mrs. Nutt, did he break my coffee cup? I notice your hands are empty. <laughs> hey, boss, I know I mean to break a dish. I was only washing on my hands, like you told me. You're washing your hands? That's nice. Let me see. Here. You call those hands? They look more like claws. Hey, I was only trying to make them a sanitary. Well, he's got me there. I did tell him all about sanitary claws. <laughs> You're crazy. There ain't no sanitary claws. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. This is no place for that kind of talk. Did you find the ghost of Mr. Nut in the kitchen? I found the roast beef in the fridge there, but no ghost in the kitchen. Why, that surprises me. Just today, the man on the radio told me that the Frigidaires are sold from ghost to ghost. All right, Rigatoni, now go downstairs and search the basement, and I'll go upstairs and check the bedrooms. Mrs. Nutt, will you go find your late husband and ask him to put on a clean sheet so we'll know him when we see him? Now, now, Rigatoni, don't come with me. I told you to go to the basement. That's what I do. But the basement is down there. Okay, but when I was a little kid, we keep the basement up the stairs, so when the rain come, you would no flood. Get down there, and I hope you find yourself lost in the dark. <laughs> ah, you craze. If I find myself, I'm a be a lost. Okay, I'm making my way down the stairs to the basement. It sure is dark down here. Wait, where's the pool came for the dark? Maybe I wave my arms around and I find it. <laughs> oh, hey, I think I find. Wait, wait, wait. I pull. Is it the light on? It's still plenty of dark. Oh, wait. <laughs> Rico Tony, you dope. <laughs> Your eyes, they still are shut. No wonder it's a dark. <laughs> okay, you look out, I, you ghost. I open them up. Ready or not? <laughs> Hey, what was that, eh? Is that a ghost? Hey, who are you? <laughs> hey, I think I know who you is. You and Mr. Newt the Castle all the time, eh? Hey, what's the matter? You're scared? Oh, hey, hey, I bet you were scared on account of I was waving my arms around, eh? Well, I tell you what, hey, look, over here, she's a piano. Must be an old one. They keep her down here in the basement, huh? How's about I play you a nice tune? She's a calming you down, eh? <laughs> okay, that's a nice. Here we go. Isabella, 
They arc and the spark the flame. Like a Marie Antoinette and a Hafella, he loses his head, but she's not to blame. Listen, brother, you know what I think? I think uh, you and uh, this other ghost, you make it a friends, eh? Uh, you do? Uh, uh, it's a good thing. You find out why he hang out around here after he did? Uh, uh, you do? Tell me. Uh, <laughs> No kidding. Hey, let's go. We go up the stairs and tell the boss. Both of you come with me. Of course this is the ghost. Look at him. This is the most ghastly looking specimen I've ever seen. <laughs> and just listen to him moan. No, madam, I'd bet your life that this is the ghost of Stately Madam. Oh, Mr. Protoplasm, this is Chives, my butler. What? The but the, the butler? Are you sure? Yes, of course I'm sure. How could you have made such an error? Well, for two reasons, Mrs. Nutt. A, he was making strange ghostly noises, and two, he seemed to be about your age. Oh, oh, oh! Now you sound like him. Are you sure you're not both ghosts? Chives, I'm very sorry that this has happened to you. Please take the rest of the day off. I'll tend to the mayor myself. <laughs> now, Mr. Protoplasm, I must say I am very disappointed in this turn of events after having heard so many good things about you. Oh, really? What are people saying about me? I... 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 Oh, can't you understand, Britannica, that I'm trying to tell you that I love you? Why, Mr. Protoplasm, I'm surprised. You're surprised? I'm surprised, too. I was gonna wait until your check cleared, but you dragged it out of me. Mr. Protoplasm? Ah, oh, call me Woodrow. Woodrow. No, Woodrow. Pronounce it with only one F. Oh, Britannica, let's you and I house my flies in the country. Eh? I mean fly to my house in the country. I can picture it now. Just you and me in the caboose of the super chief. You wear a rose, so I'll know you. No, Woodrow. All I can offer you is a little house out in the Woodrows. Oh, Mayor Gottlieb! Oh. Oh. Maybe you should have let me get off your lap before you stood up. Chives, I thought you were taking the rest of the day off. Is this how you earn the trust of your employers, sneaking up on it this way? There's going to be some change around here. Oh, Mayor Gottlieb! Welcome to my humble home, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Mrs. Newcastle Pontine. The honor is all mine, I assure you. Oh, who do we have here? Oh, Mr. Mayor, may I present Mr. Protoplasm? He's a, uh, a local, um, businessman. How do you do? And how's business? Uh, ghastly. Hmm? Oh, <laughs> well, I expect things to pick up significantly once my economic plan is approved by the city council. Ah, the city council, eh? Is du nicht ein president of der Schnitzelbank? Ach, well, I, uh... uh... Mr. Mayor, would you care for some refreshments? Yeah, yeah, it would be a great pleasure. I kiss your hand. You'd better count the diamonds in your bracelet after that smooch session. Oh! What? Um, do you have something to say to me? Yeah. 
Do you know the last time I saw a chin like yours, my brother was enjoying a big bowl of shredded wheat? Uh, Himmel, uh, this is new, Castle Pantine. Who is this man? I have never been so insulted. I, who, I, and when I say enjoying, I actually mean throwing away. Please forgive this outburst, Mr. Mayor. Oh, Woodrow, how could you? Oh, your honor, I'd never have had this happen for the world. Mein God, thanks, bye. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, boss! Hey, boss! <laughs> Listen, hey, boss! Rigatoni, what's the meaning of this outburst? Perfect timing, Rigatoni. I was just about to crush Gottlieb with my rapier wit. Gottlieb? You mean a mayor Gottlieb? Yeah, I am mayor Gottlieb. What is this? Hey, boss, I just to find out how come Mr. Nudicastle all the time, he no cross over when he die. It's a cause of Mayor Godly. Aha! And just what did Mr. Nutt have to say about his honor? Hear me say, Mayor Godly, he try and marry Mrs. Anud Castle all the time and steal all her money so he can make his economical plan look good to the city council. What is it? Mr. Mayor, is this true? <laughs> but by Mrs. Newcastle upon time, I assure you, madam, nothing could be further from the truth. I, I, I... Leaping batterballs. <laughs> Just remember the very important emergency and uh, the wardrobe change. I'm not surprised. And I must attend to it immediately. Uh, good tag. Uh, good bye. Uh, good luck. Ooh, good out of here. Say, that guy ran out of here so fast he left his shredded wheat behind. There goes your husband, Mrs. Nutt. I guess his work was done. He sure knew how to make an exit. Yes. Oh, goodbye, Donald. Hey, Shadow, you ready to go now, too? Hey, goodbye, brother. Don't forget to collect another three bucks. Hey, there goes a good kid. Lillian? Are you here? Lillian? Who's Lillian? Yes, Jamison, I'm here. But I must cross over, too. No, wait, darling. It doesn't have to be this way. Don't worry. I'll wait for you. On the other side. But what about what we said about star-crossed lovers? Romeo and Juliet, Tristan and Isolde, Sita and Rama. I can't help it, Jamison. Don't try to Rama it down my throat. I do like a woman who gets the last word in. Well, 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 my son, I begin to see you in a whole new light. Making love with a dead girl, eh? Aha, very interesting. Jamison protoplasm, necking like a necrophiliac. Now, Dad. What, are you lazy? I suppose it's easy and far cheaper to just go around with a ghost, isn't it? Well, Britannica, I hope you see me in a whole new light as well. Yes, Woodrow. You not only rid my home of my husband's ghost, you saved me from a financially embarrassing situation. I'm sorry I ever doubted you. And I... Yes, my little cheese blossom. I... Hope you won't go away too soon. Britannia, you've made me the happiest man in Kings County. <laughs> and I promise to marry you just as soon as I get back from my union-mandated six-month vacation. But don't worry, you give me 30 million reasons for coming back to you.
You have been listening to Pete Lutz's production of his new play, Do I Spectre? I'll Say I Do, written especially for World Audio Drama Day 2020 and starring the Narada Radio Company. The songs I've Never Met a Ghost That I Believed In and Phantom Love were composed by Pete Lutz, arranged and orchestrated by Dr. Ross Bernhardt. Our cast consisted of the following players. Lori Bryant as Mrs. Newcastle Upon Time. Frank Guglielmelli as Chives. Chris Messersmith as the ghost of Mr. Newcastle Upon Time. Todd Faulkner as Woodrow Fillmore Protoplasm. Nick Womack as Jamison Protoplasm. Jackie Ayers as Lillian Stately. Grace Wagner as Protoplasm Secretary Manicurist. Les Marsden as Rigatoni and the Whistle of Shadow. And John Bell as Mayor Gottlieb. Additional music was composed and performed by Dr. Ross Bernhardt. The author thanks Ms. Grace Wagner for some very important contributions to the script. This is CK Standard speaking. This was a 63 audio production mixed and mastered in Corpus Christi, Texas. Thanks for listening, and we hope you enjoyed World Audio Drama Day. Sixty three audio. This is mutual. The Transcontinental Terror is the seasonal anthology series from the Mutual Audio Network and contains stories and frights from a variety of the world's leaders of audio drama, spectral sound, and tales of terror. See you next time on the Transcontinental. Have your tickets ready. It's bound to be a bumpy ride. dramas through the Mutual Audio Network. Subscribe through Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, or iHeartRadio today. There's eight different podcasts, one for each day of the week and genre, and the Mutual Audio Network broadcast feed so you don't miss a day of your favorite shows. Subscribe to Mutual Audio tonight. Good night!